go. Are you all ready to go? Run set. All good. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, this afternoon, I'd like to uh, outline some changes to the directions for South Australia for COVID-19. Um, having done that, I'll then hand over to Professor Spurrier, who will provide more information. And uh, once Professor Spurrier has finished, I'm happy to speak about the situation in Victor Harbour today with the two young girls uh, that I'm sure you're all aware of. So in terms of um, our changes to directions, in the next hour or two, I'll be signing a fresh direction which prohibits entry for anyone travelling from regional Victoria into South Australia. Our previous direction didn't uh, affect regional Victorians other than those people who were in the Bendigo local government area, but this change that is about to take place will affect the rest of regional Victoria to the same extent that it does Greater Melbourne. The one exception for this is Victorians who reside within 70 kilometres of the South Australian border, they will still be permitted to come into South Australia and operate as they normally do unaffected, whether it be school, work, shopping, um, they'll be permitted to uh, travel into and out of South Australia for those purposes without any uh, hindrance. The uh, changes are coming into effect as a result of uh, a range of criteria that Professor Spurrier will explain, so uh, without any further from me, I'll then hand over to Professor Spurrier to explain that. Thank you and good afternoon. Yes, so at our press conference yesterday, we indicated um, that we uh, were still looking at the situation and making a decision about regional Victoria. And uh, one of our concerns had been that uh, the border community gets disproportionately affected when we do put that um, hard border in place. And we wanted to make sure that any direction we put in place um, would take all of that into account. And so um, we've reconsidered this morning and we've um, now made that decision. And some of the things that we've taken into account is that, um, as people will know, the whole of Victoria uh, is required now to have a stay-at-home order. And so this uh, direction from South Australia better supports the requirements uh, that Victoria is requiring of its citizens, and that's both for metropolitan um, Melbourne and also regional Victoria. Um, the, the other uh, reason for this um, is that we've had a little bit more opportunity uh, to look at the wastewater testing and the testing of COVID along the uh, border in those regional areas in Victoria. And it's absolutely, would be absolutely expected that Victoria would focus those resources on metropolitan, the metropolitan area and also Bendico because that's where the exposure sites have been. Um, and so the wastewater testing um, and testing in, on that border area, that is the information that we need, um, they are not doing uh, so much coverage of that at this point in time. Um, so it's not, obviously not a criticism of Victoria, but it's just we put, uh, take that into account when we're making this decision. And then the other thing is, of course, um, I do have the um, absolute benefit of getting more detailed information about the cases and exposure sites uh, at AHPPC, and we're meeting every day. Um, and I do feel that um, probably for, for uh, this, at this point in time, for protecting the health and safety of South Australia, um, that this, uh, um, to extend the hard border to the whole of regional um, uh, Victoria would be the right thing to do. Um, so we uh, understand that um, this will have an impact on people, but it is actually supporting the requirements that Victoria has already for its citizens. Um, yeah, so those are the main reasons for us making that change in the direction today. Um, it, Professor, did the um, incident down at Victor Harbour with the two stowaways have any play in that um, in these decisions? No, not at all. I mean, these are very young um, people, they're still children, and people at that age and children at this age make all sorts of decisions and um, undertake all sorts of things that um, uh, adults may not um, agree with or approve of. Um, I'm very pleased that uh, they are now, um, that we've found them, um, they've had their testing done and they're negative, and that means that anybody they've been in contact with are at no risk whatsoever. Um, can you give us an update, please, on the tracing efforts 
um, from people from Victoria, please? Yes, certainly. So um, I spoke to people yesterday about the fact that we had um, sent out about 50,000 SMS messages. Now, we've had um, a further 1,000 complete that, so there's around 21,000 people who have completed the survey. So um, it's very important if you have been to Victoria and you get a message from SA Health that you do complete that survey, and that's how we keep South Australia safe. Um, I can confirm that CDCB has had direct contact with 320 people who are considered close contacts and they are in quarantine. Um, now that figure includes um, both MCG attendees, so that Port Collingwood game um, in, Vic in uh, Victoria, and it also um, includes other people who have responded to our texts. So there was a question about why don't the numbers add up. So uh, we haven't been able to get hold of absolutely everybody that we consider at high risk um, from the MCG. But uh, that being said, even though my team hasn't been able to get hold of everybody, the majority of those people have had at least one negative test. So I really am grateful for that. So thank you very much. And of course, our team will continue to get um, try and get hold of you. And it's important for us when we have people in quarantine that we can speak to you and just check on your wellbeing as well and make sure that you've got support um, during a quarantine period and also check that you're not having any symptoms. Um, so as it was pointed out from the media yesterday, there is a legal obligation for people to be in quarantine if they are in a Tier 1 or Tier 2 site um, from the Victorian um, Health website. How many people, therefore, are you have not been able to um, get in touch with? You say the majority? How many? Uh, so I can't t tell you the exact number, um, Andrew, because it's, it is changing all the time. We get updated lists from Victoria and also the exposure side is continuing to increase. Um, so it is a bit of a moving feast, but we have um, increased the number of our staff and the teams that we are putting onto this task and uh, making all of those phone calls. But I, I think it is important to know that people, um, whilst our team may not have been able to get hold of them directly, it looks like people have really responded to this, that they're having testing done. Um, and in fact, uh, a big thank you to all the people that have had tests done in South Australia. We had more than 8,000 tests yesterday, so 8,297. The highest day we ever had was during the Parafield Cluster and it was 18,000. Um, so, you know, 8,000 for us, or just above 8,000, is, is really quite um, a high number. Uh, also to point out, there has been um, pressure on our testing systems, um, but we have the Victoria Park open 24 hours now. So if you happen to go through overnight, please give a big smile to our staff who are out there um, doing all of that hard work overnight. Appreciates the work that you and your team are doing, um, but given the sheer volume of people that came through this week, and you're now creating a 24-hour system at Victoria Park, was SA Health a little slow in getting those resources out to try and alleviate what would inevitably be the pressure that was placed on those clinics? Um, no, look, I think we've responded very quickly. Of course, you need, you do need to mobilise staff, but staff also need to have some downtime and everybody needs to get a good night's sleep. Um, we're also manning all of our vaccination clinics and those have been expanded very rapidly. And of course, we are still responsible for the Medi Hotel quarantine system. Um, so these are things outside of the, addition, uh, of the traditional hospital services that we provide in health in South Australia. And of course, uh, just to also mention that SAPOL has been supporting us as well. Now, there's only a certain number of people working in health and in policing in this state. We only have a certain number of people that work in this state, um, but we are all pulling together just to make sure that um, everybody stays as safe as possible. Professor, can you just talk us through what happens to the teenage girls and the other 34 students on the bus? So, do the teenage girls need to quarantine back in Victoria? Do the, do the other children need to go into any kind of quarantine for one night for negative test or anything? No, so because these uh, two young people are negative, there's no risk at all to any of the students on the bus, so they can just go about their normal business, hopefully will get home and do some homework tonight. Um, as to, for the two 15-year-old um, girls, uh, they really ought to be in um, quarantine. I haven't got any details about their exposure sites, but they are minors as well, and I'm, I'm more concerned about their well-being and making sure sure that they are safe tonight. Where did these girls come from? Was it Melbourne or was it just regional Victoria? I might just pass over to the police commissioner who has a little bit more detail on these two girls. Uh, thank you. Can I just add, in terms of the direction that's about to be signed, 
there's another requirement for people from regional Victoria who may have come into South Australia from 7pm on the 26th of May, so two days ago, almost two days ago at this point in time, that they must comply with level three restrictions in South Australia, which means they must have the day one, five and 13 tests, isolate till they get their first negative tests, and they are not permitted to attend COVID man management plan events. This means if you've come from regional Victoria and you're currently in South Australia, you cannot go to Adelaide Oval. So please disregard that if your thoughts were that you could attend uh, the local football game this weekend. In terms of the young people that travelled from Victoria, I don't have a specific location that they started their journey. They were reported missing to Victoria Police on Monday and Victoria Police provided advice to us that they had uh, allegedly travelled into South Australia. They were ultimately identified being at Gore in, uh, at a friend's place and from there we identified the fact that they got onto the bus, a school bus, with their friend and travelled to the Victor Harbour High School where the bus was stopped by police. Uh, the two young girls were detained and the students on the bus were permitted to leave once their parents were available to collect them. The two young girls concerned have both been arrested. They've been arrested for breaching emergency management directions and providing false particulars. Uh, we are currently making arrangements to return them to Victoria, to their families, at their family's expense. Those arrangements are not yet finalised. When did police find out um, about these two girls? How long have you guys known for? Uh, we were advised by uh, Victoria Police shortly after they were reporting missing and the information was revealed that they were likely heading to South Australia. So you've known since Monday that, you, that they were... Missing, missing, reported missing in Victoria. And you tell that they were coming to South Australia? Or? It was only recently received as they would arrived in Gorwa. So you, you, know, you don't know where they're from, but do you know if they're from a COVID hotspot at all? I, d I don't have that information available to me. Commissioner, how did they cross the border? Uh, we're still investigating that. Uh, it appears they may have hitchhiked or uh, used uh, public transport, but uh, and there has been an appeal out for anyone who may have collected these two young girls and assisted them in their journey to come forward, make contact with SA Health so they can be subject to COVID testing for their own safety and obviously for the broader community safety. Does that still stand, though, if the girls are tested negative and that was the advice. That was the advice that was provided. Uh, the negative test results for the two girls would mitigate the need for those people to come forward. But in, in terms of the investigation process, if anyone has information about the travel of these two young girls, we'd still be happy to talk to them. Commissioner Hamm, when you say public transport, uh, are we talking a, a train or a bus? Don't have the specifics, Andrew. Uh, initial information was hitchhiking, but uh, given the current level of information we have about these two girls, uh, we're not making any formal conclusions at this point. Is there a failure of border checkpoints or border controls that you're aware of allowing these girls into South Australia? My advice is they came across the South Australian border and provided false information at that time. So, as you can appreciate, that would be very difficult for local police to identify the, the, the same people that were reported missing at that time. Even though they were <coughs> juveniles? If well, I don't, know the circ I don't know the specific circumstances of how they crossed other than they gave false details. So, the was to escape lockdown? Uh, I can't elaborate on that. We do have some information, but I don't know that it's appropriate to disclose it at this time. Just how would you describe their behaviour and, and the threat it posed to the state? Well, clearly, you know, we are operating at a heightened sense of uh, concern. We've put steps in place to prohibit travel into South Australia. Um, this type of activity you know, has the potential to undermine all of the efforts we're putting in place to protect South Australia from a spread of COVID-19. So, um, this. It's, it's good that these two young girls have been found. It's very good that they've provided negative tests, but uh, the, the sorts of activities here that um, we've witnessed do, do put us at risk. Um, it's, it's probably to be expected in some circumstances. When we were in the height of the COVID restrictions back in 2020, we did identify and apprehend people who were endeavouring to sneak across the border into South Australia from other states and territories, and they were dealt with in a similar fashion. We understand that they have been to multiple sites in Adelaide, not just down in Gawler. Uh, how concerning is that for police and how many people could potentially be exposed? Do you have concerns? Well, I think the concern relates to the potential. Uh, given that they've provided negative tests, um, we can be a bit more relaxed about that now. But the potential risk of infection from these two young people, had they not been identified, is quite significant. And we've seen what's happening in Victoria now with the spread of this virus in this current circumstance. Uh, it could easily happen here if we weren't able to get on top of it. So knowing that they have provided negative tests gives us some comfort. Commissioner, can I just clarify their ages? They're both 15? 15, 15 and 16 is my advice.
The girls have made a video mocking their experience laughing while being detained by police. How concerning is, is it that they're not taking this seriously? I think Professor Spurrier probably um, highlighted the fact that these are two young people. Uh, young people behave in a way that they might reflect on later on in life and maybe regret. Um, we need to keep this in mind that they are still children. Um, Commissioner, the, is there any link between the... Uh, has the border changes, has, has this incident played any role in your decision making? It just seems a slight coincidence that we've had a major border breach, we've had a major scare down in the Thura and Adelaide and suddenly we've got a hard border closure. No, uh, we first spoke about um, regional Victoria and what changes we may need to make to our directions for travel uh, yesterday, late yesterday. The decision was made yesterday to uh, get further information from Victoria, uh, properly assess the implications for regional Victorians who live close to the South Australian border and reconvene today. So we met again at 1.30 this afternoon. Uh, after that meeting, or during the course of that meeting, we made decisions relating to what we would do in relation to regional Victoria and how we would accommodate those people who live within 70 kilometres of the South Australian border and called this press conference to provide information to the community about what those changes were. The circumstances regarding these two young girls have, have not influenced our decision making in relation to regional Victoria at all. Um, it certainly highlights the, uh, the, the risk that we face by people who don't do the right thing, but uh, in this particular case uh, I think we can take some comfort in the fact that they have been identified, detained and provided negative tests. Well, how long do you um, propose uh well, we can't put an end date on it at this point in time. We are watching very closely what happens in Victoria and the changes that occur in Victoria will also be considered by our um, directions committee. Uh, we'll, we'll monitor on a daily basis um, and make changes as quickly as we can. I think you've heard time and time again that we don't intend to keep these ch directions in place for one minute longer than absolutely necessary. So when there is an opportunity for us to relax these restrictions, we will do so. So if these girls are making plans for or arrangements being made for these girls to return to Victoria, what sort of consequences do they face from being arrested? Will they have to face court? Well, there'll still be a judicial process, but obviously it's a different process for young people, uh, but we'll still follow through on that. So are they going to be fined? They've been arrested and charged, so it's a different process to being fined, um, given that they're young people. I won't elaborate on the circumstances here, but uh, there is a youth, youth process that we have followed for young people who are apprehended in these circumstances. And will they face youth court here in South Australia? Well, there are a range of options in relation to what might happen to these two young people. Um, youth court is one option, but there are other diversionary uh, measures that may be put in place based on a proper assessment of the circumstances and the way they behave during the course of this process. Final question, please. Final question. Uh, they'll be flown back to Victoria as soon as possible? Tonight. I don't have specifics on their arrangements. Uh, my understanding is that the police officers dealing with them are still making arrangements to return them safely to their families at their family's expense. Um, Commissioner, um, are the girls cooperating? I don't have that information, Andrew, but um, you know, we'll do our job anyway. Commissioner, the uh, other girl who was a friend of these two Victorians, what kind of role did she play and how much do you appreciate her assistance in helping authorities? I don't have specifics on that, sorry. I know that there's no risk associated with that person's uh, contact with the two two young girls, but uh, I don't have further details. Can sorry. we quickly ask, unrelated to the Victor uh, one, have we been approached at all about becoming an AFL hub, knowing that I think it's calling you with perhaps next week for the Metro No, neither of us uh, have any specific information about that. It'll be a question for the AFL. Thanks, Thank you.